Hi, I'm Anthony Newbold. Welcome to A Closer Look. As we come to the end of another year, I guess this week is the Minister of Tourism, the Honorable Dionisio Diagla. Minister, welcome to A Closer Look. Thank you, Ace, for having me on this great show. <laughs> Thank you. I thought I'd want to end the year on a really upbeat note, and I thought who best to do that than the Minister of Tourism. Thank you so much. But this year, quite eventful, as, as, as I said in my intro, uh, Dorian upended everybody's business. How, how bad was it for our tourism business? So we were really on a, an extremely good wicket uh, for the first eight months of the year through the end of August. Uh, we were experiencing double-digit growth in our stopover visit arrivals, our cruise passenger arrivals. And of course, Dorian uh, descended on the Bahamas on the 1st of September, uh, my anniversary and uh, really uh, uh, wrought a level of destruction on two of our key markets, of course, Abaco, uh, which was the engine of our tourism infrastructure in the Family Islands, Family Islands. Uh, and then, of course, Grand Bahama as well. Um, so, yes, um, those two islands represented about 17% of our foreign visitor arrivals. So that's an enormous number uh, that was affected. Yeah. It's beginning to come back, but uh, it's going to take uh, it's going to take some time. Yeah. What, what was your biggest challenge immediately after the storm as a tourism organization, the so, Ministry of Tourism? What was your biggest challenge? So our biggest challenge was um, the fact that so much foreign media descended on the Bahamas. And in their exuberance to report about the extent of the storm, they inadvertently made a bad situation even worse. So what they did was they got on the, the airwaves, CNN, NBC, ABC, and, and, and said that the Bahamas is destroyed. Yeah. The Bahamas is wiped out. This is an unprecedented storm, historic levels of devastation. And really didn't take the time, and I guess at the time they really w w weren't thinking about it, to say, yes, these two islands have been destroyed, but really 85 to 90% of our tourism infrastructure has been unaffected. And what, first of all, you suffered the loss of Abaco and, and Grand Bahama immediately after the storm, but then you st started to see it impacting your unimpacted islands. Yeah. So you had all, you know, Exuma, you had, of course, New Providence, where 75% of our foreign visitor arrivals come, which had very little impact from the mm. storm. And so people were thinking, oh, well, the Bahamas wipe out. So yeah. I, I have to uh, uh, change my plans. Um, I have to think of another destination in the Caribbean in order to, uh, to make my, my, my bookings. And that negative public relations, that yeah. just constant beating about the Bahamas is wiped out, the Bahamas is destroyed, it's a historic storm, really created a public relations nightmare for the Ministry of Tourism. That, that yeah. we just couldn't overcome the extent of the negative PR that we were receiving. And then you had to focus on the other islands, New Providence, Exuma. Uh, so, you, so, so what we did was we had to be sensitive to the fact that yeah. our brothers and sisters in Abaco and Grand Bahama had, had, had just experienced this yeah. historic um, hurricane. But we had to quickly mobilize into letting the world know that much of the Bahamas was unimpacted. Um, when we went to Canada, we had to say that the Bahamas from Freeport down to Inaugura is a roughly, we had to switch into their yeah. methods of measurement, is a thousand kilometers long. The storm was uh, um, maybe 150 kilometers wide, so much of the country was unimpacted. In the United States, we said the Bahamas is 550 miles from the north to the south. Uh, the width of, of the storm was about 70 kilometers, I mean 70 miles. And so m many of our destinations were unimpacted. We had to get out there that the Bahamas is still open for business. We had to get out there the islands that were unimpacted. We really had to sensitize the traveling public um, of what was mm -hmm. impacted and what was not impacted, which was the vast majority of the country. So an education about the geography of the Bahamas was necessary, and that was a monumental task, yeah. primarily because Hurricane Dorian just really captured the headlines for two weeks, yeah, yeah. all over the world. Where did you get most of your support trying to get the message out after the, after the storm? So, um, uh, you know, a lot of our media partners yeah. uh, were very understanding and really um, made available to us uh, 
um, in some instances gratis, access to their viewers. Yeah. Um, CNN, um, um, a lot of the major networks and, and a lot of our key markets. I remember one day I was in the uh, top room at the Hilton with a camera in front of me and a beautiful view of the port of Nassau and, uh, and, and, and the lovely uh, water in front of Junkanoo Beach. Mm -hmm. And for four hours, yeah. at three minutes at a time, I just went from network to network. So you were speaking to Susie in Cincinnati, and then you were speaking to John in, 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 in New York, and then you were speaking to Fred in, 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 in Miami, and they were all anchors on particular shows. And all you were doing is saying over and over again, the Bahamas is open for business. Yes, this hurricane has been devastating. Yes, it has impacted our, our country, but much of our country has been unimpacted. And really the best way you can help the Bahamas, if you're so minded, is to visit the Bahamas. But if you come to the Bahamas, and while a lot of people might think, oh, I don't want to go to a country that's suffering from devastation and, and, and destruction, uh, we just, we, we had to sensitize them that were you to come to Nassau or to Exum or to other islands in the Bahamas, um, you, did, you didn't have to be confronted yeah. with that, 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 that level of destruction and despair. You could come here and have a holiday and, and know in your mind you were really helping this country to rebuild and to help its citizens to the north. All of that pointing up the importance, really, of, again, going to education and letting people know what the Bahamas is all about that is not NASA. Wasn't that, at some point, that was the focus? Yeah, I mean, you, you, you can't lose sight of the fact that um, there's a couple of statistics that I always like to keep in the front of my mind. First and foremost, about 80% of our foreign visitors come from the United States. Right. In fact, it's 82%. So just over 80% of our foreign visitors come from the United States. When you factor in Canada, there's another 7%. So almost 90% yeah. of our foreign visitors come from North America. Right. Of those that come here, 75% of them start their vacation in Nassau. Yeah. So they start here, and then they go out to, uh, uh, some stay here, and some go out to the other islands. And so it was very, very important for us to get out there that first and foremost, Nassau, is open for business. You've got you know, your major resorts, Atlantis, you've got Bahama and a, and a, and a bevy of, of other uh, hotel options that are open for business. So you can come here and if you're still minded and still interested in going off into the family islands, a lot of them are open to or not right now. At that time it was in October. Right. So, you know, uh, 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 come. A lot of people, what I found, had already bookings for uh, Thanksgiving and Christmas. Right. So, you know, the hotels were like, you know, you can't cancel because yeah. there's nothing wrong. Yeah. The airlines didn't allow you to cancel, so there was nothing wrong. So through the end of the year, we kind of maintained, kind of maintained. Our, 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 our arrivals into those unimpacted islands. What we're seeing, however, is in the first quarter of uh, next year, of when next people year. were in the decision mode, kind of October, November, for what they could do in the winter, yeah. that's where we're experiencing some softness, and that's where we have to focus on on, on directing some resources to generate demand. All right, I want to talk to you about some numbers, but we got to take a break, and we'll be back with more. Minister of Tourism, the Honorable Dionisio de Aguila, down a closer look after this. Welcome back to A Closer Look. I'm Anthony Newbold speaking with the Minister of Tourism, the Honorable Dionisio de Aguilar. Let's talk about some numbers now. Where are we in terms of tourism numbers? Um, so I always like to, to, to divide our tourism arrival numbers into what I call stopover visitors. Mm -hmm. Those that come here, land here, get in a taxi, go to a hotel, eat in a restaurant, spend a number of days here and our cruise passengers. Obviously, the stopover visitors, the ones that stay here for a couple of days, are that much more economically impactful because they're touching so many people during their stay here. Cruise passengers tend to come in for the day, spend three or four hours on the ground, and then they leave and go off to their next destination. The storm has significantly impacted our stopover visitors. Um, they're probably down about 10% uh, for the last, uh, for October, for September and October. Uh, we were trending up double digits up until the end of August. Mm -hmm. And so our stopover visitors are beginning to trend downwards as the negative effects of the storm are impacting our arrival numbers for September, October, November. And we expect a small negative impact for December. Obviously, we've also taken out of our inventory. We don't have Abaco. 
uh, a lot of the... Yeah, uh, the, 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 let me the, ask you about that, since yeah. you mentioned Abaco. Is there anything that resembles a tourism plant in Abaco right now? Oh, absolutely. Uh, um, there are a number of hotels that were obviously south. Yes, south, the south of Marsh Harbor, like Winding Bay. Um, that's had very little impact. Um, and then obviously uh, one or two um, um, facilities to the extreme north of Abaco. But by and large, the heart, yeah. which is Marsh Harbor, Marsh Harbor, has been taken out. And so it's hard for, it, for, hard for that tourism yeah. uh, infrastructure to beat without the heart. So we need yeah. to fix Marsh Harbor in order to uh, really spur on and to support the tourism infrastructure, especially in the Keys. That yeah. would, uh, that's, that's, uh, and, and, and those people there at the heart of, yeah. of Abaco, they, they're looking forward to rebuilding? That's the, or or uh, people are saying, I'm not sure what I want to do with this now. You know, one, one of the disadvantages of being an archipelagic nation is that people could leave it yeah. and go somewhere else. They, so they moved, they shifted to Nassau. Yeah. It, were we a single island country, people would have just stayed there and had to rebuild and get on with it. So you really had an exodus out of that island of a lot of people that could be involved in the rebuilding process. So they are now settled here in Nassau, in good situations or not. And they are waiting to see what attracts them back there. So if you're a family, you're looking for schools, you're looking for food stores, you're looking for infrastructure that will support yeah that lifestyle. If you're certainly uh, just going up there for work, to do construction, you need a lot less. And so the government is starting that process of putting in, you know, there was no accommodation. So much of the living accommodation in Abaco was wiped out that it was very, very difficult uh, for people to go back to work because there's no place for them no to live. And so we're, we're attempting to address that. Um, um, so, you know, you have the difficulty of lack of scale. There's just, you, you, yeah. need, you need to create an environment where people are, go back, they have employment, they can live in a reasonable, uh, reasonable environment, and then that will start to kick off uh, the rebuilding and rebirth of Abaco. And I think you know, we're getting closer every day for that to happen. And I probably think in about, um, whatever, six months or so, that will kick off and then, then there'll be a, I'm convinced there's going to be a building boom in Abaco as everybody yeah. you know, get the insurance money, those that have it, and, and start to rebuild. We certainly met with a number of the uh, major uh, hotel operators and, and resorts uh, in, in Abaco, and all of them have expressed an interest to rebuild. To rebuild. So, um, you know, it's just... The get, government get, needs to make sure that infrastructure is there, the basic infrastructure yeah. for them to take but off. But I mean, even so, you, you need construction companies, and they right. need to get man camps, and they have to get equipment on the ground, and all of that is necessary in order to fuel this yeah. impending rebuilding uh, boom that I'm sure is about to take place down there. You were talking about this, and we know this, uh, most of the tourists coming to the Bahamas come from North America, U.S., Canada. Is there any hope at some point of attracting any appreciable number of visitors from any other area of the globe? You know, I, I recently went to an investment conference, and, and, they, and they looked at three major markets. One was Europe, the other was Canada, the other was the United States. And they said, you know, Europe, the economies are relatively flat. Um, of course, the United Kingdom, Britain is in the, in the throes of this Brexit discussion that has gotten everybody on edge and nobody's making any major decisions. Um, Canada, its economy is robust. However, the people there are very highly leveraged, so they've got a lot of debt. So yeah. the, the, the money to travel is, is not, as, um, not as robust as one would hope. The country that's doing the best is the United States. The United they States. have record low unemployment, 3.5%. Uh, their savings rate is at 8%, which is at record levels. They're feeling wealthy. They're feeling good. Mm -hmm. They're right next to our country. So my argument is why I go all the way to other parts of the world to look for, uh, yeah, yes. uh, for, look for foreign visitors when the country that fuels our tourism economy is doing so well. Yeah. And they're just the type of foreign visitors that we want because sure. they come for a three, four days. They spend a lot of money when they get here. They have a good time. You know, what I find with the Europeans, first of all, there's a heck of a distance to travel. And then on top of that, they have so much vacation. Their yeah. economies, their cultures dictate that they get 30, 40 days of vacation. And so coming to the Bahamas for, say, 10 days is expensive. Mm -hmm. And therefore, what am I going to do with the rest of my 30 days of vacation? I can't blow it all on 10. Send them to the family islands. Yeah. So it, it is, you know, about 6.8% 6, 6 of our foreign visitors come from Europe. Yeah. But the United States, there's so many more markets to explore there. What about the West Coast? What about... Uh, the Midwest. Yeah. Uh, um, um, certainly, have we, have we really um, taken advantage of, of Texas 
um, of other states in the United States. So I, 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 I've the, brought focus to bear. Yeah. Let's not take our eye off the goose that's laying the golden egg. Let's not yeah. get distracted with all these little places where you can get one 200 and 500 and 1,000. Let's focus on the United States. It's hot. The economy is great. The people have money. Unemployment is low. Yeah. The stock market is at record levels. Let's go get them. Let's go get them. Let me talk. We talked about Abaco. Let's talk about Grand Bahama, which has been struggling for years now. Uh, what's what's going to happen with uh, Grand Bahama's tourism down there? So the government is very optimistic about um, options in, in, in Grand Bahama. You know, Grand Bahama has had a very, very uh, difficult period. Um, and, and certainly up until the, the arrival of Hurricane Dorian, really only 4% of our stop of foreign visitors came via Grand Bahama, as opposed yeah. to 8% in Abaco. Yeah. More foreign visitors went to Abaco, stopover visitors, than they did to Grand Bahama. So because, this is, because they had no tourism plant down there, really. That's absolutely correct. There's no scale down there. So you need, you need, you need rooms, you need, you need to attract inward investment. Um, obviously, the government has signed uh, 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 an impressive and historic deal with Carnival to build their cruise port down there. Uh, we're in the throes of a negotiation with Royal Caribbean and a, a company out of Mexico known as ITM, which are intending to buy the Grand Lucayan property and to begin the renaissance of that property and also to invest in the cruise port down there. So we're hoping yeah. that these two major projects and, and, uh, and, I, and I believe also that the cruise companies are expecting to invest additional monies in the shipyard down there. Okay. So I'm hoping that these three projects begin to provide the catalyst for inward investment. Um, I think we need to look at the process by which inward, inward investment takes place in Grand Bahama because there are numerous complaints about how bureaucratic the process is. And so focus yeah, needs to be brought to that in order to facilitate inward investment. Um, but I think that with these projects that the government has on the burner and, and are about to pull the trigger on, they are going to provide the catalyst to say, okay, the pendulum was swinging down for a long time. Now we've reached the bottom and, and now we're up. beginning to swing back up and really start the, the rebirth of Grand Bahama. One more point on Grand Bahama, but I've got to take a break and we'll get back to that. You're watching A Closer Look. I'm Anthony Newbo speaking with the Minister of Tourism, the Honorable Dionisio Diagula. We'll be back after this. Welcome back to A Closer Look. I'm Anthony Newbo speaking with the Minister of Tourism, the Honorable Dionisio Diagula. Grand Bahama, as all the other islands, including New Providence, whatever happens, you need airlift. What's happening with the airport in Grand Bahama? So the airport is not owned by the government. It's right. owned by the Grand Bahama Airport Company, and, um, which is Hutchinson Wampoa. Um, I think this is probably the third time in, in, in as many years, probably seven or eight years, where that airport has received a catastrophic uh, destruction. And so the, the current operator of that airport is really taking a second look at, do we really want to stay in this business? Because, you know, we seem to have not had much luck in it. And, and they've approached the government in, in their quest on deciding what they are going to do is, are we interested in acquiring it? And I've always said, you know, acquiring the airport is not a big issue. The, the, the issue is, is what are you going to do when you get that airport? Because you can't rebuild it back the way it always has been because every time you get a storm, it floods. Yeah. So you have to build some resiliency into that airport. That takes money, that takes re resources, that takes focus, that takes management. And so buying it is the easy bit. It's what we're going to do when we, when we get to it. And just as, a, as another note, Abaco is an airport that we do own. Right. And we have commenced operational, or we've operationalized international flights there today. And also uh, on this coming Monday, the same will happen in Grand Bahama. Uh, when they're seeing this show, yeah, uh, you're saying the airport should be, be open. open. Yes. Uh, and I asked this question of someone else, somebody like uh, Vancouver, Vancouver Airport Services, the people that run the uh, Linden Pinling International Airport. I, I would imagine the government ought to consider talking to somebody I, I've like that. I've spoken to them. They're very mm -hmm. interested in, 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 in looking at the transaction to see how they can help. Obviously, it needs investment. It needs management. Yeah. 
Um, and so the government is really looking at how best to structure that deal. There's so many ways to structure these deals. Um, and, you know, we're looking at that uh, in the event that we buy it. We haven't, yeah. we haven't pulled the trigger on that yet. Yeah, but, but that is one of those things that needs your urgent attention. Absolutely. You recently experimented with something in Florida. I think it's some pre-clearance. Explain exactly how that works. So when the storm descended on the Bahamas, um, the government of the Bahamas decided to put uh, customs and immigration or customs in, in South Florida. Bahamas to, Customs? Yes, Bahamas Customs in South Florida at some of the uh, FBO, the private aviation uh, um, facilities. Okay. Uh, this is not for a commercial aircraft. This is just for general aviation. General aviation are people with their private planes. We have a huge amount of business between South Florida and the Bahamas in the field of aviation. Lots of people visit the Bahamas in their private aircraft. Primarily family islands? Absolutely, yes. Yeah. Primarily, of course. And so when there was this overwhelming level of support uh, of, of people wanting to bring aid to the country, it really was inefficient for them to go first to a port of entry, declare customs and immigration, and then proceed on to the uh, affected area. So what the government did was set up customs in South Florida where persons could go to clear, mm -hmm. fill out all the required paperwork, and then fly directly into the island in which they wanted to travel. So this uh, greatly facilitated um, the speed at which aid was arriving. It uh, removed the cost of stopping one place and then proceeding on to another place. And really, in our minds, facilitated the flow of, of, of relief into these islands. And then we started to think, well, hey, this is working so well with relief aid. What about general commerce? Yeah. So if persons want to fly into these islands and, and want to build and rebuild or to do whatever they need to do, is this not an efficient um, improvement in the ease of doing business in those islands? And so we're looking at the possibility of continuing what Ma was a temporary Making uh, that measure. a permanent feature. Yes. Uh, talk about uh, North America, access to tourists. Many years ago, BTOs, Bahamas Tourist Offices, big thing, very important feature of the tourism business. What's happening with the BTOs now? Um, uh, have we opened them back up again? Wh no, where are we? So we've got one in, in uh, the biggest one, of course, the headquarters is in Plantation, right. in Atlanta, uh, uh, Houston, uh, and New York. And so those are our key critical markets. None in California. None, no, none in California. Um, but, you know, in, in the days when most people traveled, they use the travel agent. Right. So the, the way people purchase vacations is so different today than when we had those tourist offices, right? So those tourist offices were, were supposed to go out and meet with tour operators and travel agents to, in, in, to really educate them so that they could educate their customers on coming to the Bahamas. And while there are still a lot of people that use that mechanism, that methodology of travel, there are also a lot of people that travel by booking online. The largest travel agency uh, to the Bahamas, or who supplies the greatest number of foreign visitors to the Bahamas, is Expedia. Yeah. So they are virtual. Yeah. And so uh, we have to change the way we do business to accommodate the fact that this is how people purchase their vacations. If 80% of our foreign visitors come from the United States, 70% of them purchase their vacations online. Vacations online. So it isn't the way it used to be, the way you and I grew up buying yeah. Yeah. vacations and getting a voucher and a ticket and going to the travel agent and all that sort of stuff. That has changed. So we have to change how we allocate our resources to accommodate for that phenomenon that has now taken place. Talking about online, uh, a lot of people watch the show online. I think you've answered most of the questions that uh, they wanted answered. Tell us some good things for 2020 as we come to the end of this show. So the Ministry of Tourism has uh, allocated additional resources to, to, to get the message out that the Bahamas is open for business. In fact, our new marketing campaign is that the Bahamas is still rocking. And uh, we're uh, getting that message uh, into as many uh, markets as we can to educate the traveling public that much of our country was unimpacted by Dorian. And as time goes on, the effects of that storm will diminish in the minds of the traveler. And so I expect while it may be 
a, a slower than expected first quarter, that as we move through the year, and as the effects of Hurricane Dorian begin to fade from the traveling public, that our numbers will once again return to the robust levels that they were pre-storm. Thank you, Minister, and Merry Christmas to you. Merry Christmas to you, and thank you for having me on your show. Thank you. Thank you again for watching A Closer Look. Again, you can watch us on Facebook and on YouTube. Merry Christmas.